Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. You're probably wondering why most kits that have 29 millimeter engine mounts and larger don't have engine blocks. Now, if you're used to building Estes rockets, um, you always glue the engine block in front of the rocket motor inside the engine tube. Uh, but on larger rockets, uh, we don't usually use the engine block because most rocket engines have an engine block built into the back of the motor like this one here so that when you put it into the rocket it prevents it from moving forward. Now there is an exception to this um, and that are old motors like this here this is an old G79 the new ones do have that engine block built in but the old ones didn't and so for these they would slide all the way through and so then you would have to glue the engine block behind the motor to prevent it from moving forward. Um, currently the only engines in 29 millimeters that don't have an engine block or the, um, the engine thrust ring built into the back of the motor are the Estes um, E's and F's that are 29 millimeters in diameter. So for those you would probably have to glue in the engine block and to glue it in what you do is you take some glue stick it on a stick like this and then swoosh it around inside put the engine block in and then push it in with the rocket engine until you get it into the desired location and typically what I do is I have my engine hang out the back at least one half inch um, uh, three eighths to one half inch would be fine um, that way you can wrap tape around the outside to hold it in to prevent it from sliding backwards when the ejection charge goes off. Um, all the, the reload engines um, will also have the thrust ring on the back. Um, so if you have an engine block already in and you, have, you put a, an engine with a thrust ring in, a long engine, it's going to hit that block and prevent it from going in all the way. Let me push it out. So for a long engine like this one, it actually hangs out the front, and that's fine. It can hang out into the front of the rocket, um, you know, just like that. There's nothing up there anyway, and the uh, wadding would go right, right up on top of it, just like it would on an engine, on a regular engine. Um, there is an exception to uh, reload motors, and that is the Cesaroni reload casing, where you can get a tapered. Uh, closure like this one here. These are typically used on minimum diameter rockets where you want the rocket to have low drag. Uh, but if you, you can also use those in these rocket engines, but remember it is going to stick out the front and so if you would need a longer engine tube and then put the engine block in front of it to prevent it from moving forward. The problem with these is you can't use the new style engine retainers. Um, the new retainers are glued onto the back of the rocket engine, like or the back of the engine mount. It's a two-piece system, so one part is glued to the tube, you know, to that tube right there. And um, then you slide your motor in, and it prevents it from moving forward. And then to prevent it from being kicked out, you screw on the, the outside part and that prevents the motor from coming out. So if you're building an engine mount, you really know, need to know what kind of rocket engine you're gonna be flying. If you're gonna be flying a composite motor, I would recommend leaving the engine block out. Just take it and throw it into your supplies box and use it for something else. Uh, you don't really need it uh, to hold the rocket engine in because the thrust ring is built onto the back. So my name again is Tim Van Milligan, and this is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.